Now, we all know that Favreau and Filoni are really working hard on a lot of Star Wars projects out there, including, of course, now Disney CEO Bob Iger, who took over Bob Chapek not so long ago, is really reshaping things and putting things, of course, into different perspective for the roadmap of the Star Wars universe moving ahead. We already have Star Wars Celebration on, of course, you know, the flip side of things with a lot of other announcements on the horizon, and even D23 of next year that's going to be a very big deal as well. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. It is greatly appreciated. Now, about, of course, this new universe that remains intact is that things are shifting around. Now, looking at, of course, you know, what happened with the sequel trilogy movies, we already know that that was a real big hit and miss moment for Disney, and Bob Iger is now really trying to make things up for the fans. That's why he's jumping in. He wants to put out more Star Wars movies again, absolutely, you know, more so than the current output of Star Wars TV shows. He wants to turn things around and bring Star Wars back to the cinema. And that's one thing that I do agree with about Bob Iger. The rest, you know, I don't really agree with him about. Uh, I've never been a really big fan of Bob Iger and the way he handled things, but it looks like that now they are finally trying to make some kind of improvement and are really trying to take a stand to win back some of the fans. So that brings us to, of course, what Jon Favreau recently had to say about Disney and, of course, just the how Star Wars was handled under Bob Iger's leadership many years ago. So, with that being said and all, we already know that Favreau has been working around the clock and doing a lot of different things. With Bob Iger now taking over as the new Disney CEO and making some changes to the Star Wars roadmap for the fans, creators Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni have been developing some new Star Wars TV shows that will be announced next year. However, in a recent interview that Jon Favreau got involved in, he went on to heavily criticize Disney and their use of Star Wars. Favreau went on to state the following. Well, looking back at the sequels, I just think Disney didn't really care what they were doing at the time. They had no heart in those films, and they really could have been so much more. This is a big problem I see many times in the film industry when a certain franchise comes back since years ago, is that they want to play things safe and just give the fans what they saw before already. I thought that was the first big mistake with The Force Awakens, and I blame Disney for that. Too many similarities, and as a writer and as a producer, I would have gone into this a completely different way by really giving fans a brand new story that did not actually have to hang on to those familiar locations. So let me just pause here of what Favreau is saying. Obviously what he's referencing is how Jack Who was basically Tatooine, how Starkiller Base was the Death Star, um, and also how Starkiller Base was a snowy world, much like Hoth. It had all of those similarities and those moments where I agree with Favreau, you know, they should have really started things very different with brand new worlds that we have never seen before, different types of environments that we have never seen before. You see, that's the one thing that I liked about The Rise of Skywalker is that it had planets that we have never seen before. I gotta give credit to JJ for that because Exegol, I think, was a game changer. I thought it was one of the best Star Wars worlds in the sequel trilogy, you know, dedicated, of course, in the sequels. It had its own unique feel to it. It had its own sound because of the lightning. It had its own, you know, creepiness to it. And I think it was a very well-crafted, you know, planet. And when you look at what Jon Favreau is saying here is that they played things safe, and they did. Bob Iger admitted to this a couple of years ago that they had to play things safe, according to them, because they were so afraid of redoing what happened with the prequels, where the fans actually created a lot of backlash and criticism. And you know what? In the end, Disney shot themselves in the foot, and they did that anyway, with The Last Jedi and even The Rise of Skywalker to a degree. But The Force Awakens, even though it was an entertaining movie, you subconsciously thought to yourself, not necessarily consciously thinking, but you subconsciously thought to yourself that something was off, right? Something was going on here. There were a couple of red flags that you weren't quite aware of while watching the movie until 
the next two movies came out and then you really noticed Disney's overall you know um, intentions I guess you could say with these Star Wars movies now with that being said all right on to the next big thing here of what Favreau has to say he goes on to actually state there was a time when Disney's higher-ups approached me when I was making Mando to actually not make things too different and I told them if I have to play very safe with this series then I am leaving and once I said that, we came to an agreement. Sometimes it takes a creator to take a stand and defend himself for what he loves to write and create. And I was very let down that JJ did not stand up for himself. Myself and Dave are finding ways to improve the experience of the sequel movies with many of our upcoming projects. Now, John has said this before in the past that he does not necessarily believe that the sequels are 100% bad from start to finish. And I think I agree with that too, because it has its moments, it has its scenes here and there. You know, tidbits of the films are good, in my opinion. And I do agree that the movies, you know, in its entirety, are not really all that great. Um, at the end of the day, they don't really match the originals, they don't match the prequels, at least in my opinion, as far as how Star wars -y feel it actually has, right? It doesn't necessarily have that all the time. Sometimes it breaks that Star Wars magic. And so, you know, I think that there are magical moments in there, you know, things like, of course, for example, you know, uh, I thought that the Death Star lightsaber duel between Rey and Kylo was great. That was a good moment. I felt that, you know, when we look back at The Last Jedi, even though I do not like that movie, I felt that Luke and R2 reuniting was a special moment. It has little moments here and there like that, that really stand out. But besides all of this, Jon Favreau is really putting it out there clearly and directly to the fans that he took a stand. He defended himself against Disney because they tried to do the same exact thing with The Mandalorian. And believe it or not, guys, The Mandalorian originally was supposed to be a Boba Fett series where it was just going to feature Boba Fett as this bounty hunter. And Jon Favreau wanted to do something very different and new, just bring a new character into the world. And you know what? I respect that because in the end, what he did was he actually did a little twist on Disney's original intentions is that he later involved Boba Fett as a side character. It works perfectly. I thought it worked amazingly. And then he eventually got his own show. It works. I see what Jon Favreau did. And we've always talked about this of how Mandalorian is being treated as a foundation to spawn new spin-offs. And once the Mandalorian ends and comes to a close, whether it's going to be season four or season six, depends, is that once that ends, John has openly stated that he plans to create a new foundation, so to speak, or a new baseline show that's going to spawn other spin-offs. And that, I think, is a very good and healthy technique. So overall, guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys have to say about all this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.